Fifty-two percent of everybody who's signed up in DoTerra has never signed up another person. Eighty-two percent of everyone who's ever signed up in DoTerra has never signed up another person. Just so you know, DoTerra is just barely getting started. Like it's just, just kind of. Like you know when we talk about the growth curve and everything. And after, I mean, I fell into this as well, where I kind of thought. Oh yeah, we're probably getting close to maturity. That's kind of what I was thinking. No, no we're not. And the reason why is because doTERRA appeals to the masses. There are three percent, there's three percent of the world that does network marketing. <coughs> and they all go from company to company to company looking for the and the other 97% of the world doesn't do it. And then doTERRA comes into our life. And let me tell you, if I were to if, if I were to start over here and have all hun this hundred people right here. And I were to take them, I could get 50 here, I could get 25 to sign up, I could get 10 to 12 to commit to build. Now, if I was over here and I invited to door three, I started with door three and asked everybody on my name's list, would you like to come and learn how to make money with doTERRA? Do you know what percentage I'd get? Maybe one or two. <coughs> but because we use this method, it keeps the doors open. So people who are normally closed off to the idea remain open. Just help. You guys see how that works? Okay. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Give them a round of applause. someone to come to a class and they can't make it to that class, do I go straight to a one-on-one -on -one, or if I have an, another class scheduled, do I go to that? <coughs> Whichever. I mean, if you have time, I like to get with people as soon as possible. The other thing is, is I like one-on-ones. Classes are great. You like one-on-ones, Carol? Yeah. I love one-on-ones. Uh, yeah. I was wondering if you have like or something that you say the questions you were teaching, and we learn to say what you're saying, because I noticed that one, one little word will give you. Well, Luce, I'll slip you a $20 bill after the evening, but, um, yeah. <laughs> so this right here, so this is the CD set, and it's called The Four Essential Steps to Build Your Essential Oil Business. This one's on finding, this one's on teaching, rolling, and duplicating yourself others. So, okay. yeah, very good. Okay. Luke should get a free one just for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Have you ever found it effective to tell people what to do rather than to ask them? Hey, come over to my house. I'm having a class on essential oils. Depends on who it is. But if you have found it effective. Uh, sure. If I have a buddy, I'll just say, hey, you need to come over to my house. You know, that type of thing. The thing is, here's here's the one thing I will I'll tell you about that though. I love working with those that are open because if they're open and truly interested, yeah. it means a lot less headache later on. Like, um, um, for example, uh, Carol, I'll just ask you this. So let's say that you met somebody, random person, and, and they go, hey, I want to sign up. You know, like, you, you met someone and they seem interested, they live, they live in uh, Maine, for example. Okay. Met them on a plane and they're like, yeah, I'm kind of interested. Do you get overly excited about that sign up, or what's your attitude when you sign someone up? Well, that exact same thing happened. She's from Michigan, and I got overly excited, but then I realized I got too overly excited. I mean, I practically gave her, you know, my whole uh -huh. daughter's whole book <laughs> yeah. sitting off the airplane because I thought I found the golden leader. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes I feel like I I have done that, but. Like to me, every time, this is what I think when I sign somebody up. Probably gonna want training too. 
<laughs> and then you're going to expect me to mentor you, right? Right. And then at some point you're going to stop returning my calls. Like, and part of it's because I have such like a big team that like it's difficult for me to bring on another person. Like I'm like, I'm really committed to my builders and to bring on one more person. Now I can place them on teams in my team, and, and then I'll have people be ecstatic to have one. But, but to me, it's it, to, it means more work. Exactly. So I'm like, oh my gosh, no, here we go again. So just, I guess my point is, the reason I brought that up is because telling someone, you can get someone to sign up by just telling them, you know, hey, sign up, you can get a whole selling house, the best thing you can do, right? <laughs> hey, you need to build a business. Come on, let's do it. Hey, why aren't you building a business? I told you to do it a long time ago. Right? And, and the fact of the matter is that eventually, those those who are convinced against their will are of the same opinion still. Right? And so I just I work with the open. It makes life a lot easier. Okay. Now you someone asked about how I explain the business opportunity. Here's the business opportunity. Okay, there once was a guy who lived in a village, and his job was to haul buckets of water. So he lived in a village and his job was to haul buckets of water from the from a water source that was two miles away back to the village every day. That's his job. Every day he hauled buckets. If he wanted to make more money, he simply made more trips. If he wanted to go on vacation, he had to haul a lot of buckets before he left. And then when he got back, he had to haul a lot of buckets to make up for the time when he did leave. Does that make sense to anybody, or does that resonate with anyone? Sounds like work. It sounds like work, right? Um, now, what happened was, is after years of hauling buckets, he realized that if he didn't change something, he'd be hauling buckets his entire life. So what he did is he would haul buckets during the day to pay the bills. And then in the spare time, he started to create a pipeline. So you could say that he worked full-time on his job and part-time on his fortune. Full-time on his job and part-time on his fortune. And after years of doing this, he finally puts a spigot in the village, and the villagers can come and get as much water as they want. Okay? Now, let me tell you how this story normally plays out in doTERRA. There was a guy that lived in a village, the village was two miles away from the nearest water source. His job was to haul buckets back and forth. He did this diligently to provide for his family. His wife got sick and tired of doing this, so she went out and paid for my wife. <laughs> 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 there once was a single mother. She lived two miles away from the nearest water source. She hauled buckets every day. She had kids and somehow found time to be a mom to them, haul buckets during the day to provide for them. And in whatever little time she had, she somehow amazingly created a pipeline. I've seen that too. In fact, the most incredible one that I've ever seen was a single mom hauling buckets during the day to pay the bills, came down with cancer, and through radiation treatments lost all of her hair, and got to the point where the chemotherapy made it difficult for her to think and comprehend. She could text messages from her team, and she would go to her upline sister and say, can you come up with a coherent response? And she built a platinum pipeline. Now, when I met her, Honestly, I thought, I have no excuses. Whatever excuse I'm telling myself, it's so incredible, I believe it. She blew it all out of the water. But that's the story. And all of us have to create a pipeline. I want you to understand that. When it comes to the business side of this, everybody has to. <coughs> now, I have seen people that will come to me and say, I, I'm not interested in the business. I just share the oils. As if they're standing on some sort of superior moral ground because they're not interested in money. And to that I say, bull oh, crap. Oh, that's so wrong, I can't even tell you the levels in which it's wrong. Just so you know, the mission of our team is to lift and liberate. To lift others and liberate them. And, and of all the things that I've done, I love helping people find healing to their bodies. 
but helping people find healing to their finances has brought me much more joy, to be honest. Like when I see my sister, who is a mother of seven, a stay-at-home mom forever, homeschooled all of her kids, never had more than just paycheck to paycheck, just getting by, and finally triples her husband's salary so he can quit his job. That is amazing. To see that, to see the change that happens in people's lives. In people's lives. So, I, just so you know, when it comes to this, when it comes to helping people create a pipeline and get a spigot in the village and allow them to go pursue their greater cause in higher purpose, I see that as some of the greatest, most noble work I could ever be involved in. Now, let's go to the next slide and let's talk about this. What if on the 15th of the month, it, it is January 15th right now, which by the way means happy things for me. <laughs> <laughs> I really like 15. <laughs> But what if on the 15th of the month, what if on the 15th you received a paycheck? And what if that paycheck was $5,000? The 15th of the month, and then now this was not a paycheck like you get from your job. This is like a pipeline paycheck. This isn't a bucket paycheck. This is a pipeline check that comes every month on the 15th. What if on the 15th of the month, $5,000 came into your account every month? went on vacation, didn't matter. You took the whole month of December off to spend it with your family, the next month another 5,000 came in. What would happen to you in your life if that were a reality? Can you see what would happen? Let me ask you this, do you know where the money goes? Can you see where the money goes? <coughs> if $5,000 a month hit your account every month? What if it was 10? The 15th of the month, another 10 came in. 10,000. Next month, 10,000. Next month. 10,000. What would it do to you? How would it change your life? Where would that money go? Now, what if it was 25? Every month, 25,000. Every month. What would happen to you? How would it impact your life? What would it do to you, your marriage, your spouse? What, what would it do? Okay, now let's say it's 50. The 15th of the month, 50,000. Last year, on the 15th of January, I was in Tulum, Mexico. And Natalie Goddard walked up to our table. And she said, I feel so blessed. Now, if you know Natalie, you know it's still. She goes, We just got our paycheck today. It's for $200,000. What would happen if on the 15th of the month, $200,000? $5,000, you all know where, you knew where that money went, right? If $5,000 came into your account, you know exactly where that went. And I imagine that by the time we got the 25 to 50, it kind of became a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> and then when I mentioned 200, do you have a clue? Nope. <laughs> let me just, let, let me tell you what happens to me. When I think 5 or 10, I think of everything that will have, that will do for when it gets bigger, I start thinking of everywhere. Right? Here's the principle. Thinking small is selfish. Thinking big is selfless. That, that gal I was just telling you about that I, that I went to door three on the first one, <coughs> she, she cannot have her own children. She's unable to conceive. So she got into adoption. She and her husband adopted three kids. And there are just these beautiful boys. And she did that in the middle of her poverty. Went into great debt to become a mother. And then afterwards, she said, no one should have to do this if they truly want to be a mother. When I become Diamond, I'm going to start a, uh, a fund that helps mothers adopt kids when they want, if they can't afford it. Now, since she's become Diamond, she's already paid for mothers to get their children. Now, let me ask you. How much money is too much for her? Do you wish that she had the 200? I do. I wish she had as much as she wanted. What if, if you look at this on the 15th and you start thinking, what, when this starts coming into my life, what happens? There's something that happens when, you, when your needs are taken care of. You immediately start to think about what you can do to change the world and make it a better place in which to live. Your greater cause and higher purpose in life starts to happen. This is something I've learned since doing this. All of us have a divine mission and purpose. 
reason we were born. All of us, there's a reason why we're in the families we're in, the siblings we have, the parents that we have, the communities we were in, all of that, there's a purpose. And the purpose of our life has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with hauling buckets until we're dead. It has nothing to do with that. And yet that is what most of us spend most of our lives doing. It's just hauling buckets until we're dead. Because the pipelines we've established have not been good enough. Either the social security isn't big enough, or whatever investments we've invested in isn't enough, and so we have to haul buckets until we are dead. I, I promise you, it has nothing to do with your greater cause and higher purpose. That is not why you were sent here to earth was to do that. And yet we have been conditioned to think that is the responsible, the right way, the, the get your head out of the clouds, feet on the ground way of doing things. And yet, it's a choice. I have also learned that. It is a choice. And so if, what if this were the case, what would you do? I give every single person that I mentor an assignment. And when they find out what their long-term goals with go care, right? some of them will come to me and say, I want to be a diamond. I'm like, okay, do you want to be a diamond? Average diamond makes 16000 a month. I want you to journal for one week, 10 minutes every morning. Just ask yourself this question. If, my, if this goal were a reality today, how would it change my life? And journal about it. And after a week of doing that, they come back to me and they say, I know I'm supposed to do this. There are things that I wrote down that I had no idea I wanted to do in my life. But I was so busy calling buckets, I had no idea there was more. See, when you create a pipeline, everything becomes an option. Everything becomes an option. Money is very similar to oxygen. In fact, if there's a lot of people in the room here. Have any of you in the last oh, hour thought, I hope you don't run out of oxygen? <laughs> has, it crossed, has it crossed any of your minds yet? No? Not one time you thought about oxygen. Not once. Why? It's always there. Because it's always there because there's an abundance of it, right? And since there's an abundance, we don't worry about it. Now, can I have everybody, just, let's just do this. Blow all the air out, and then hold your breath at the end of that. Hold your breath. Now, none of you have thought about oxygen for an hour. And within 10 seconds, the only thought on your mind is what? I want to breathe. It's the only thing that you're thinking about, right? Within 10 seconds. Isn't that kind of like money? When we don't have any of it, what do we think about all the time? I don't build a pipeline and try to become a presidential diamond in doTERRA. I don't do that because I'm obsessed with money. I do it because I just don't like the way it is when I don't have enough of it. I hate about constantly thinking about it. You want to know the last time I thought about money? Uh, 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 maybe two years ago? I just don't think about it. Why? Just for the same reason why all of you weren't thinking about oxygen. Because there's plenty. And I also know that next month, the check's actually going to come in again on the 15th, and it's going to get bigger. See what I'm saying? What if this happened? What if? What would you do? And if you don't know, I'd recommend taking the assignment that I give everybody that I mentioned. Journal about it for 10 minutes a day for a week. What would I do if this were a reality today? Let's go to the next slide. So why, why then would you want to make doTERRA your pipeline? This is how I show people how to do, why doTERRA is my pipeline, right? So let's go to uh, the, the first, click on the next thing. Okay, first of all, the reason I have chosen doTERRA as a pipeline is because they have a 65% retention rate. 65% of everybody who has ever signed up in doTERRA orders product at least once every one to three months. 80% of doTERRA's customers order at least once a year. The network marketing industry it's 13%. 13. Could you imagine replacing 90% of your team every year? Oh my gosh, that's like the worst idea ever. That's totally terrible. <laughs> and here's the problem. The reason why network marketing has a bad name is because of that. Is because 13% of people stick around after a year. That is like hair pulling out stuff, right? That is not a pipeline. This reminds me of a cat that I have. Huge. This cat's name is Rambo. It's an enormous cat. We don't let Rambo in the house because Rambo, well, I can't control if it, if it poops or not in the house. So we, we don't let it in the house. One day I came home, kids left the cat in the house. And I went, dang 
looking at Rambo's in the house. <laughs> I walk around and I'm like, where's that? And I'm looking around and I see behind the couch steam coming up. I'm like, there. So I move the couch. I go over there and sure enough, freaking Rambo's a huge head. I can tell. And it looks like she's sick. He's sick. So what I did is I took my tin foil and I'm like down and I'm like seesawing like this, you know, underneath the thing, trying to get it very careful not to get any on my fingers or under my fingernails. Because if that happens, somehow cat poo is, is scientifically proven to molecularly bind with anything it touches. <laughs> so, so anyway, so if you ever get it under your fingernails, my advice for you is to amputate your fingers. There's no way to get it rid of it. So anyway, so I finally get it, I get it all wrapped up and everything's fine, and then I'm, and I'm like, oh, like this, like, what do I do with this cat? It's still warm, you know? I'm like, oh. So I'm like, well, so I walk to the kitchen, I put it on the counter, I go to my thing, I get some, and I get some, I get some gift paper. Some wrapping paper, and I take the, the cat poop, see, and I wrap it nicely in this beautiful wrapping paper. I take a bow, put a huge bow on it, it's beautiful. My wife walks in the door, she says, Oh, Seth, you shouldn't have. <laughs> now, some of you are wondering why I have two wines. <laughs> That's not true. By the way, I made up that whole story. Here's the point cat poo is always cat poo, no matter how much you wrap it up. Cat poo is always cat poo, no matter how much you wrap it up. That's cat poo. And I don't care what they say about their compensation plan, and about how this and that, and their oils are certified something or other, or, or whatever. I don't care. Cat poo is cat poo, no matter how much you wrap it up. Doterra has an 80, it's 80% 80 or 13. That's how they, that's how they, do you see what I mean? So when someone says, why did you choose doTERRA? It's because doTERRA actually has the capacity to be a pipeline because of the retention rate. See what I'm saying? Oh, and by the way, if you build a team, we're using the three-door method, it's your, your retention rate even goes higher because the people are so converted to the product. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, now, how is doTERRA a pipeline? Well, first of all, there's five ways that doTERRA compensates us. The first way is retail. Basically, you buy something at uh, wholesale, at 75%, you can sell it at 100%, there's a 25% markup. Question for you, is this a bucket or pipeline? It's a bucket. Which is why I personally don't spend any time doing retail. Back in the four and a half years that I've done this, um, I've only probably made about $200 in retail sales. I just don't care about it. It's not the reason I'm in business. I don't want to be a Mary Kay distributor. I don't want to carry product in my car. I don't want to have my, my garage full of stuff. I don't want any of that. That's retail. And the fact that people do that when it's still a bucket just blows my mind. Okay, let's go to the second one. The second one is called Fast Start. And the way that this works is if you enroll someone, by the way, everything you're seeing here is in the business overview. Okay? So the business overview has every graphic I'm showing. Okay? Now, if you, this is paid weekly, but if you sign someone up, you're going to make 20% of anything they purchase in their first 60 days. If this person signs someone up, you're going to make 10%, and if this person signs someone up, you're going to make 5 So this is the example I give with every person I sit down with to do a business overview. What is your name? Brenda? So if I were to enroll Brenda, I would make 20% of anything Brenda made in her first two months. Make sense? Okay. Brenda, if you were to enroll, what's your name? Sharice. You would make 20%, and I'd make 10 Okay. And Sharice, if you enroll Teresa, you'd make 20 make 10 and I make 5 of anything Teresa bought in her first two months. Is that clear? That's the example I use every single time and work they get it the first time. Now, is this a bucket or pipeline? It's still a bucket. Alright, it is a pipeline. And it is also a bucket. <laughs> and the reason why is because this number right here, that's bucket money to you. It's a commission for making a sale that lasts for two months. But 10 and 5, that's pipeline money. And the reason why is because as you grow, enrollments keep happening. And on every, like Carol, you tell me, but on the on the every Friday or when, you receive a check, right? Yeah. Everyone. Even when you don't enroll people, even when you don't yeah, enroll. Yeah, but I've never gone without a check. I've right. never gotten zero fast start since I started. That's right. So this is a pipeline, but, but it also has bucket <laughs> limitations to it. Okay, let's go to the next one. The third way that you make income with doTERRA, this is a monthly bonus, and it's called Power 3. And it, 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 it um, is basically a, a bonus that is designed to reward loyalty rewards orders and the proper structure. 
So basically, if you're here and you sign up three people on your front line, and you and each of them each have 100 PV loyalty rewards order set up, right? And the total volume between you and your entire front line, including other people, is at least 600 OB, then you qualify to receive this bonus. Does that make sense to everybody? So if you sign up those three people in that structure, then you're going to get a $50 bonus each month that this happens. If those three do the same thing, you're going to get a $250 bonus every month that happens. And if those nine do the same thing, you'll get a $1,500 bonus. Bucket or pipeline? Pipeline. Right. And by the way, every time I explain a way to get paid in doTERRA, I ask them that question. Is this a bucket or pipeline? And by the end of the presentation, in the beginning, they'll go, just like you did, that's a bucket. And by the end, they go, a oh, pipeline. They're already thinking it. I'm conditioning them to start thinking about pipeline money versus bucket money. Go to the next one. The fourth way, this happens to be my favorite way, um, is the unit level. Basically, if you sign someone up who signs 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 someone up, you get paid on all of that. Now, what you make is you're going to make 2% of all the volume on level 1, 3% of all the volume on level 2, 5% on levels 3 and 4. 6% on levels 5 and 6, and 7% on level 7. What do you notice about that that's unique? It gets bigger as it goes down. That's right. Now, the reason why that's good is because let's say that you're growing a structure that goes 3, 9. If each person were to sign up 3, right? So it goes 3, then 9, and 27. Go back to the previous slide. Right here. 3, 9, 27. Okay, now go back. If each of those signed up three, go to 81, 243, 729, and 2187. If each of those people were ordering 150 PV of product per month, you can see how your paycheck each month would grow upwards of 32,000 per month. In that structure, by the way, do you know what a vehicle is for? We got four, we got four, we got four. 222,000 a month. If it was six, we got six, we got six, we got six. A million a month. So no. All right, now. So you're asking, well, why didn't I put in those numbers? Because no one would believe it. That's why. Okay, let's go. To, now, hit the next thing. I want to show you what other companies do. Most other companies do it the exact opposite of doTERRA. It puts 7% at the top, and then it gets slowly gets smaller as it goes. So with the exact same size of organization, same size amount of volume that's happening every month, the difference in paycheck would be a $20,000 difference per month, just based upon flipping this like that, like doTERRA's done it. That's the difference. So people ask, does doTERRA have a great compensation plan? Answer confidently, yes. We have a fantastic compensation plan. Because it allows that kind of earning to take place. Now here's the question for you. Why then, by the way, I want you to notice, do you notice how doTERRA is colorful, bright, and beautiful, and they're so ugly and dramatic? Right? <laughs> oh, oh, and I didn't even mention it. And then there's this. So why then would a company do that? Why would a company pay 7% up here and 2% down here when it means a $20,000 difference in their pay? Yeah. Trying to get you to stick around. Yes, because the retention rate is so low, they have to pay you more right here. Because our retention rate is so high, they know that we'll stick around for the eventual check. That's the difference. Because our retention rate is what it is, it allows them to pay us the way they pay us. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then plus the fast starts and the power of three and so forth. Pretty cool, huh? Now, bucket or pipeline? Pipeline. Okay. Rod, come on. He's never heard this before. He's so sure. I'm going to take the notes, man. How do you make money with this? So, Rod, by the way, he way that you get paid is the leadership bonus pools, and this is one of the ways that most people don't even understand, but it's very exciting. But what happens is every single month the company takes 6% of their total global sales, they stick that into uh, five different bonus pools. So at each month they take 2% of all sales, they stick it in a pool, and they split that up like a pie, and if you're a silver in the company, you get one slice of this pie each month that you hit silver. If you're gold in the company, you get five slices of that pie. And if you're platinum, you get 10 slices of the pie. So you can see what your slice would equal, equate to roughly because the pools change a little bit each month. But every month that happens. That's a bonus that you get on top of your unit level and on your power of three and your fast starts. That's just an extra bonus. 
Now, if, then what the company does is they take another 1%, and this is shared amongst diamonds, blue diamonds, and, and uh, presidential diamonds. Then they take another 1% and they share it with just diamonds, another 1% that's just for blue, and another 1% that is just for presidential. So, if I'm a diamond, I'm going to get one slice of this pie here, one slice of this pie here for around a $4,000 monthly bonus. Did anybody not know that yet? That's what they do that. Now, if you're blue, you're going to get one slice of this pie, two of this for a total of about a $12,000 monthly bonus. And if you're presidential, you're going to get one slice of this and three slices of that for about a $35,000 monthly bonus. Now, is that state steady as their hair is changed and grown? Is that? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. In fact, because as more people hop in the pool, right. the pools get bigger because more, more people are becoming diamonds. So, yeah. um, I was asking a presidential diamond the other day where they are with this, and he said it's anywhere between 35 and 50. So that's the one that fluctuates the most. Um, but I like both ends of it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I would have done it, but you're saying it's 50 instead of 35. <laughs> Is that, is that clear how that works? Now, buck or pipeline? Pipeline. See what I mean? So by the time the person's done with it, just like all of you, you, you know right away. In fact, as you start looking at it, like, what is this buck or pipeline? This is all. It's a pipeline money. This is why we do it. Let's go to the next slide. Now, how do you get to those ranks? By the way, but when I show them that, the next question out of their mouth is, how do I get there? Right? <coughs> well, the first rank that matters, really, is called executive. And it's 2,000 in overall volume. The next rank is Elite with 3,000 in overall volume, and the next rank is Premier. Now, Premier has 5,000 in overall volume, but they have to have two executive teams. So, for example, let's say that you signed up one person, and that one person did a million dollars in volume. You would be what? You'd be Elite, until you signed up one other person that did 2,000 in, in volume. Is that clear to everybody? That's how you become a So. That's how you build that. Now, by the way, I have people on my team that have one person who's doing 300,000 OV and they're still elite. Wow. So, yeah. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Silver is when you have three elites. Remember how, many, how much volume was in each elite? 3,000 3, in overall volume. So the overall volume of the silver would be what? At least 